Open your book to page three, 342. Okay, today's lesson is on the law of cosines. So let's, gonna, let's go back a little bit before we get to the law of cosines. Let's start uh, with the Pythagorean theorem. So when you have a right triangle, and if you remember to find the, the sine, uh, C, you go C squared equal to A squared plus B squared, right? So this is the Pythagorean theorem for the right triangle. This is for right triangle only. But when you have a non-right triangle, any, just any triangle, okay, so you got A, B, C, and so you got angle A, angle B, angle C. So for the non-right triangle, you have to use the law of cosine. And actually what happens is that the Pythagorean theorem, this is a special case of the general triangle. So the formula for this, if you're talking for C, would be C squared equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. Okay, so this is the formula for, for that, for any triangle. And this is a special case of this. So if you look what happened over here, what happened when, you, when the angle C is 90 degrees? When angle C is 90 degrees, cosine of 90 degrees is zero, and so this is gone, and that's, how you, that's where the particular theorem came from. Okay, so this is a special case of these. So, and when you try to memorize a formula, try to base on, on the pattern. Okay? So you're familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, right? So again, you start with that. So whatever side you're looking for, let's say if you're going to start with B, you're looking for B, so you need to start with the B squared, and then you, you use the other two letters. So B is over here already, so the other two letters would be A squared and C squared, right? Again, you have to get all three letters. Then over here, you minus, think about when you, when you square something, you're going to have middle term, right? Like a perfect square. For example, let's say if you have, you know, if you have an A minus C square, remember that? You're going to get A square minus 2AC plus C square, right? See that? So that's, that's where the middle term is, okay? And then you, uh, AC, this one is, so you got A and C, so you need to use A and C, right? And then you're going to get cosine of, now you have A and C over here, so you need to get B, right? So go by pattern. So again, over here, you need to get all three letters. Over here, you need to get all three letters. Okay. And notice that this letter and this letter have to match, right? If you, if you start with small b, you can end up with a big b. Okay. And if you have AC over here, you're going to get AC over here. So try to memorize based on the pattern, and that would be very easy to memorize. So if you start with A squared, you're going to get, so you have A over here, so you need to get B squared and C squared. And if you have BC over here, you're going to get BC over here, and you need to get cosine of A. Right? So again, you got ABC, right? ABC, ABC. And over here, you got ABC, ABC, ABC. So if you use a pattern, formulas are very easy to memorize. Okay, now let's go over example. Uh, see how to use the, the formula. So let's go to example one. So let's go to page 345, example one. So you, you have this triangle over here. This is the angle C. This is A equal to 13.9. This is angle A and angle B equals 34 degrees, 20 minutes. Small b, small c equal to 10.10 .10 meters. So whenever you're sawing for a triangle, you always do this. So go ahead and get your A, B, C together to keep everything in order so you don't get confused. You don't uh, end up making careless mistakes. So just go and do that. and. Start putting things in there. So you got C equal to 10.0. B is 34 degrees and 20 minutes. Small a equal to 13.9 meters. A good idea would be try to look for uh, the, the length. So let's go and look for the small b. Okay, let's look for small b. So if you're looking for small b, you need to start with b squared, and then your equation would be. So you got B over here, so you need to get A and C on this side. And since you got A and C, so it'd be minus 2AC, right? And then you need to get cosine of big B. 
Right, again, try to memorize on the formula based on the pattern. So now you're going to substitute whatever you know into here. So b squared will equal to 13.9 squared plus 10.0 squared minus 2 a c cosine of 34 degrees, 20 minutes. And then you go ahead and work it out, punching all these numbers in your calculator. So you get b squared equal to 63.6458. You know, give it a few extra digits. And so b equal to 7.9778. Again, over here, give it a few extra digits. When you write your final answers over here, you follow what is over here. Notice there's one decimal place, right? So let's just go 8.0. If you run this off, so that takes care of the length. Now you're looking for angles. So which angle should you should you get first? Well, you want to get a smaller angle whenever you can. So you want to get angle C. So angle C is smaller than angle A because length C is length is shorter than A, right? So again, you have to, you got to remember something from geometry. From geometry, the smaller angle will face the shorter side. The bigger angle will face the, the, the longer side. So that's how you know that angle A is bigger than angle C because the length, this is longer than this. And the reason you want to look for a small angle first is because in a triangle, you only can have at most one obtuse angle or one right triangle. You can have more than one. Because remember, a triangle has, you add all three angles together, it's equal to 180, right? So if you have, if you have more than one obtuse, Cannot, right? It'd be more than 180, right? So by so by doing that, if you're looking for a smaller angle, then you don't have then that you know the big angle is gonna be the wrong one, so you cannot have that. So you don't have to worry about two cases. If you if you look for the bigger angle first, then you're not gonna know if both are good or one is good, one is bad. Then you have to work out both cases to find out oh, okay, one of them is bad. Okay? So again, so you always look for the smaller angle first. And the, the one that's bigger than 90 or greater than or equal to 90 is the one that's no good because you cannot. Because if this is bigger than 90 already, if this is obtuse and this is going to be bigger than that, you're going to end up with two obtuse angles and that's impossible. Okay? So that way it will save you some trouble. So you can always try to get the smaller angle first. So let's go and get the angle C. So you have to use the law of sine. Right? Again, and you, you can use a lot of cosine, but it's too much trouble. So try to use law of sine whenever you can. It's much easier to do. Okay. Now, how do you know when to use law of cosine or law of sine? Okay. What you do is look at what it's giving. So in the beginning, you got, you got small a, big b, and small c. When the giving, the three letters are different, you got a, b, c. When three letters are different, use the law of cosine. When you have two of the same letter, like right now, Right now you got this situation, you got two of the same letters, then you can use law of sine. Okay? So you can if just think about, you know, just, just think about if you if you play cards, right? Three of the different kinds is like a straight, right? So A B C that's like a straight. So use the law of cosine. If a two of the same letter is like one pair, use law of sine. Right? So that's a way that's a way to remember. Okay, so now let's look at so let's try to get angle C. To get angle C. Okay, you can go and use the law of sine, right? Or if you use the law of cosine, you can. You can use the, the A, B, and the C, okay? But it's too much trouble. So let's go and use the law of sine to find angle C. So you're going to get sine C over small c equal to sine B over B. And I'm going to move this up here. So sine C equal to small c is 10.0 sine of uh, B is 34 degrees, 20 minutes, over small b is 8.0. So get your calculator. And let's enter all these. So 34.20, convert that into decimal degrees. Take the sine of that, times by 10, divided by 8, which equal, okay, so sine of C equals 0 0.7050, and then you go second sine, 
So you're going to get angle C equal to 44.8 degrees or 83 degrees. And you, you want to convert into, you, you want to follow what it's giving, right? So convert that into uh, the, uh, degree, minute, and seconds, right? So convert that. So this, so C equal to 44 degrees, 40, uh, if you kind of run it off, it's, it's 50, okay, let's just write these things out, 49 minutes, 49 seconds. So when you put your answer over here, it's going to be 44 degrees and 50 minutes, okay? Now, remember, when you use a law of sine to get an angle, you're supposed to get a second angle, right? So if you get the other angle, the other angle is going to be, like I said, cannot, it's impossible. It's going to be about like 45 degrees. Let's say about 45 degrees. Uh, I mean, what, I'm sorry, 135. Okay, so if you're 135 already, and this is going to be even bigger than that, right? Because this is longer than that, means this ain't going to be bigger than that. Again, it's impossible. That's, how you, that's, how, that's why you want to go and get a, the small angle first, because you cannot have that. It's impossible. Okay? That way you don't have to deal with the second case. So once you do that, then you can go ahead and find A by subtracting. Okay? So if you add these two together, this will give you... So when you add, right? You can, it's easier. To, I, I really hate to use that on the calculator. It's such a hassle. It's faster if you do it manually. So you got 34, 20... And you got 44, 50. So when you add, you get 70, you got 8, and 78, right? But you have to carry, right? Every 60 minutes equal to 1 degree, right? So it becomes 79, 10, right? Okay, so these two equal to 79 degrees, 10 seconds. You have to subtract that from 180. So I'm going to use 180 degrees minus 79 and 10 minutes, right? So borrow, so it becomes 179 degrees and 60 minutes. So when you subtract, you get 100 degrees and 50 minutes. So 100 degrees and 50 minutes. And then that is your answer. Okay? So just make sure you understand the law and make sure you memorize it. And then after that, just, it's just a matter of working out the algebra. Okay. okay, so let's go and do some practice.